Hi, I'm Norm Abram. Welcome to the New Yankee Workshop. Now today we're going to take on one of the more unusual projects we've ever attempted. It's called a nest of drawers. Ten drawers of varying sizes in a case. Now you could set it on a table, or you could actually hang it from a wall and make a table out of it. I'll show you the antique original in just a minute, right here on the New Yankee Workshop. The New Yankee Workshop features the craftsmanship of Norm Abram. Well, today we're at the private collection of a friend, and there's a piece he wanted me to show you. It's this one right here. It's called A Nest of Drawers. Now, he picked it up from an antique dealer, and the antique dealer picked it up in England. We have no idea what it was originally used for, but the pine is really antique. Now, if you look at the joinery, it's quite good. The corners of the case are through dovetails, and the drawers are very well built. Half-blind dovetails on the front, through dovetails on the back. Now, what's interesting about this piece are the pulls. They're an integral part of the draw front. They're not applied. They were carved out of the front. Now, I suppose I could measure this up, but it would be easier if I could just bring it to the shop. Maybe he'll loan it to me for a couple days. Now, if you'd like to build a nest of drawers, a measured drawing is available with a materials list, and you'll hear more about that before the program ends. Now, you could build this project out of new pine, but it just wouldn't look quite right. So I'm using my dwindling supply of recycled pine. Here are some boards that I planed down earlier this morning. But here's what they look like before I got started. Now, these were probably floorboards, because they've been painted. This one even has plastic stuck all over it. The first thing that I did was to remove any bits of metal so as not to damage my planer knives. The first thing I want to do is pass these boards through the planer, taking a little bit off of each side until they're the right thickness. Now, before we use any power tools, let's take a moment to talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these, safety glasses, and of course, hearing protection. Now, you'll notice that the corners of the case or carcass are joined with through dovetail joints. So the first step is to rip and joint the top, bottom, and ends to the same width. The first step is to run each board through the joiner. That straightens the edge and makes it perfectly square. Next, I can rip the board to width, being sure to set the jointed edge against the rip fence. The width setting is a little bit larger than the finished width that I'm going to need to account for one more pass through the joiner. For the last few minutes, I've been setting up my dovetailing jig, and I had to elevate it on some blocks because of the length of the top and bottom boards. In fact, they're just barely above the floor. The objective here is to form the tails. And I can form the tails by using a dovetail bit and passing it through so that this part of the material remains. The piece of plywood is just a backer block. The key to this system is the adjustable fingers. And here I'm going to slip it in and set it to the all position. You can do any layout that you want. Now to make the cut, I'm going to use my router, which is equipped with a dovetailing bit, and a little collar. The collar slides in between the fingers. We'll form tails on the end of each top and bottom piece. Okay, let's check the fit of the pins. 
That's pretty good. Now to make those pins, what I did was mount the end board in the jig with the front face or the exposed face towards me. I flipped the fingers over and I've switched the bit in the router to a straight cutting bit to excavate the material. For the last few minutes, I've been doing the layout to make stop dados for the partitions between the drawers. There's five across the top, three across the bottom. I need dados in the top, bottom, and middle shelf. Now, because the middle shelf is only a half inch thick and the top is five eighths of an inch, I've made a one eighth inch shim so that the pieces will be flush to one another. Now, I'm going to make the dados using a router and a guide clamp. I could measure every time I have to set the clamp, but I find it easier to make a gauge stick. The gauge stick equals the distance from the edge of the router base to the cutter. All I have to do is take the gauge stick, slip it against the clamp, slide it into position, and lock it down. I just move it to each location as I need. Now these are stop dados, so I'm going to start at the back here, come in, leave this material right here at the front edge of the middle and top shelf and then complete the rest of it. Now the, the reason I'm doing that is because the dados do not show through. They're stopped. The depth for the dados will be a quarter of an inch, except in the center where they're stacked one over the other. There they'll be an eighth of an inch. Just move the clamp over to the other end and route that one out. Now, once again, I'll move my guide. And this time, I'm just going to make a quarter inch groove in the bottom piece. Now I'm going to make an adjustment to the router depth down to an eighth of an inch and make the last pass. Now the ends of the case get the same stop dado right down the center. What I have here is a ganged up group of the partitions. And I've just nibbled away the notch, which will fit into that stop dado. Now what I want to do is reclamp the pieces and then nibble the other corner out. Now for the two center partitions that are stacked one over each other. I want to just take off an eighth of an inch. Now there's one more notch to make, and that's in the end of the middle shelf to fit around the stop dado of the end piece. And since the piece is so large, it's easier to do it with my little dovetailing saw. Well, now we can start some assembly. I'm just using glue on all the glueable surfaces. Now, if I do this right, I won't need any mechanical fasteners. Well, that's just about every short clamp I own. Now, I'll just let it dry for about an hour. Now with the case unclamped, the next step is to make a rabbet in the ends and the top and bottom pieces. And to do that, I'm going to use my router, which is set up with a 3 8 inch rabbeting bit and a ball bearing guide. 
Now the ball bearing will run on the inside of the cabinet, but as I come along, I'm going to come to these intersecting dados, and I don't want the ball bearing to roll into that dado, so I'm simply going to use my finger as a guide to keep the router right on track as we pass each notch. Now I've turned the piece around to show you the back. It was made with just a couple boards, and no effort was made to conceal the edges. Now I'm not only going to conceal the edges, but I'm going to use plywood, because with plywood I'll get extra strength in the case, and I can also hang the piece from the wall with some screws into some studs. Therefore, it might be nice in a front hallway to put your keys in or gloves, whatever. Now, I need to make one more rabbit, and that'll be in the plywood, so that it'll overlap the rabbit that I already milled in the case. Now we'll just round over the corners to fit the rabbit on the case. Now just a little bit of glue and some one inch brads will secure the back to the case. Well I have no idea what this original nest of drawers was used for, but it was well used. The draw fronts are worn, all the edges are rounded over. I imagine these drawers were opened and closed thousands of times. Now it adds a lot of character to the piece. So what I'm going to do is ease the edges on the one we're building. I'm going to start out by using my router and a quarter inch rounding over bit to do all the openings and the edge. Using my profile sander, which is outfitted with a block that closely fits the contour of the round over, I can now sand everything smooth. One of the most appealing features of our nest of drawers are the drawers themselves. Just look at the craftsmanship. The sides are joined to the front with half blind dovetails. The sides are joined to the back with through dovetails. Now these were all hand cut. This line right here is just a score mark that was used to do the layout. Now we're not going to cut them by hand. We're actually going to use a router and a dovetailing jig. Here are all the pieces for the drawers, and I milled them up out of my remaining recycled pine. Here are the draw fronts, 11 sixteenths of an inch thick, the back pieces, 3 eighths of an inch thick, and the sides, 3 eighths of an inch thick. The first milling operation is to put a groove along an edge of each side piece. I've set up my stacked dado head cutter for a quarter of an inch width and an eighth of an inch depth. Now without changing the setup, I need the same groove along the bottom edge of each front piece. Now let's take a minute to review what distinguishes a through dovetail from a half blind. On a through dovetail, the end of each tail shows, and you can also see the pins. But on a half blind dovetail, you only have a side view of the tails and the pins. Nothing shows through the front. That just gives a nicer, cleaner look. Now we're going to mill the half blind dovetails first, so I've set up my dovetailing jig. First, I mount one of the side pieces in the jig. And the reason I like to mill the grooves first is so that I get the pieces in the right orientation. The inside of the draw always has to face out. If I see the groove, I know I've done the right thing. Now here's a piece that I've already milled. This is the final product. I want to have a half pin on each end, and I'm going to use three tails. You can adjust these fingers for any number. It could be one, it could be two, it could be four. Now I also have to put in these little blocks right here, because as I run the router through the piece, I don't want it to slip between those fingers. I want just to remove a little bit of material. I also have to keep in mind the adjustment in and out of the jig. And that's set on this dial to the thickness of the stock, 3 eighths of an inch. I also install a backer board, and what that does is it minimizes any tear out on the side that's going to show as the bit goes through. Now 
Okay, that takes care of the right side of the drawer. Now for the left side, I mount another piece in, being sure to put the groove on the right side of the jig. Well, with all the tails milled in the sides, I'm now ready to mill the pins in the drawer fronts. The first thing I'm going to do is take a scrap of wood and just mount it so it touches that sacrificial strip and clamp it in place. This will be a stop. Now I'm actually going to remove that plywood. And I'm going to be using the top of the jig to mill the pin. So I'm going to slip in a draw front on each end with the groove up. And I'm going to lower the finger assembly so it's nice and tight to each piece and lock it in position. Now what I have to do is slide the draw front up against the stop that I installed, making sure it's nice and tight, and we'll clamp it in position. Okay, now what I want to do is flip the finger assembly over to the other side and set the dial to the thickness of the side pieces. So once again, 3 eighths of an inch. Now using the same procedure with the router, I'll cut out the pins. Let's check the fit. Just going to take some sandpaper and knock off the burrs. That's good. Now, to do the other end, once again, I want to keep in mind that the groove has to be up. Spin the piece around, slip it in, and repeat the process. Well, now we'll do the remaining nine. Now we're ready to mill the through dovetails that'll join the draw sides to the draw back. The first thing I did was to take the template for the dovetailing jig and flip it end for end. So now it's in the through dovetail mode. I'm going to set each side piece in the jig, again with the inside of the piece facing out, and clamp it in position. I'm going to mill all the tails first. The procedures are exactly the same as those that I used when I made the case, except that I'm using a slightly smaller dovetailing bit. All right, we're almost done with the dovetails. The last step is to mill the pins in the back piece. So I flip the jig over into the pin mode, and I've switched the router bit from a dovetail to a straight cutting. Well, now a little glue on all the glueable surfaces, and we'll put the drawers together. Okay, the draw bottom just gets tacked in place with a couple brads. And that takes care of the basic draw. Well, now comes the hard part, making the draw pulls. As far as I can tell, the way they made the ones on the original was to do a faceplate turning on a lathe and then assemble the draw. But there's another way. I can make the same thing using a router and a series of router bits and templates. Now the first router bit I'm going to use is a one inch round nose bit and a three quarter inch collar. The jig is made up of quarter inch plywood 
with just some side pieces for alignment. And the hole is three and a quarter inches in diameter. I've put a center line on the jig and a center line on the draw front. And I'll just temporarily secure it in place with a screw. Now the most important thing about milling this pull is not to excavate any material in the center. So I have to very carefully set the router into position, push the collar all the way up around the, to the outside, and continue to hold pressure to the outside as I plow it out. Now it'll take about three revolutions with a little more depth with each pass. That's good. Now another jig, this one with a 2 and 11 16 inch diameter hole. I'm using the same collar on the router, but I've switched to a half inch straight cutting bit. Now the objective is to remove the inside of the concave closest to the knob. That's good. The next step is to make this little reveal around the perimeter. To do that, I've switched to a larger template, three and three quarters inches in diameter. I have the same half inch bit, but I've switched to a slightly smaller collar. The next step is to attach this plywood button right on the center of the knob. It's going to act as a template. The next trick is to taper the knob so that it's easier to grab. To do that, I'm going to use a dovetailing bit. Now, I can't simply plunge it into position because the bit is tapered. But there is enough flat area close to the knob that if I carefully set it in place and start it up, it'll do the job. That works great. Now I'm all ready to sand them out. Steve Swift, a furniture maker on the island of Nantucket, gave us the recipe for this finish. You start out with a couple coats of an oil finish. The manufacturer happens to call this one an antique oil finish. After this dries for about 72 hours, I can apply a coat of tough oil-based polyurethane. Makes the piece look great, and the finish is durable. Now here's what the piece looks like with a coat of polyurethane over that oil. I apply it with a brush, and then wipe off the excess before it goes completely dry. Now the question is, what do I put in the drawers? I'm still working on that.